Welcome to the live stream of consciousness. Yes, I am welcome. Your host Jesse Blaze, and this is my co-host Michael Zinn, and we are here to awaken the consciousness within you and point out all the things that a conscious person might be thinking about. Nice. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Yeah, you've been busy with your uh, voiceover acting. It's getting you all riled up. Thank you. I, I have. I literally just finished doing um doing a audition for like a, a narration for um this like football uh thing which i uh, people who know me i i'm a ex semi-pro football player national champion actually and um uh so that's really up my alley so that was a lot of fun but i realized i recorded it and like the, it came in in like such low volume before i did the show and i went on you were like the microphone's a little low i'm like oh i ra- there's two microphones in here i raised the microphone that i wasn't using <laughs> <laughs> and the microphone Oops. I was using stayed low, but now it's nice and high for the show. All right, very good. cool. You sound so, wonderful. Thank you. How's uh, life going by you, Mister Mister Michael Zinn? Life is wonderful. What's up, Courtney? What's up, Taylor? What's up, Angela? Hello, yes, hello, hello to everybody. everybody. All of our regulars, we so appreciate having you here as always, <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming. And we hope you're spreading the word about our fabulous show. What's yeah. up? What's think- your life been like? Uh, My life has been really good, as usual. Um, This weekend, uh, Janice opened up her own space for doing some Reiki. Uh, She has has a room where she can actually take some clients on now, and uh, she has some clients. And, man, it's it's so good to see her doing what she does because it just makes her glow. She's so happy doing it, and and. So uh, that was exciting, um, and and work is going great. I've been working on some some video stuff for uh, this um, event that's going on tonight in Manhattan. Uh, they needed some videos. It was like an awards yeah. ceremony, and so I did that today. And uh, I'm just I'm just pumped tonight. We have a great guest, so I'm excited about that. And uh, what about you, my friend? How's your week been going? Looks like it's nice week- warm out there on the uh, West Coast. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, you know, my week's been really good. Uh, my my uh, my mom and some of my siblings and uh, my kids are out in New York today. I mean, probably maybe wrapped up by now or wrapping up by now at uh, the wake for my um, my step grandmother who just passed oh. away, um, Grandma Lou. Sorry. Wherever you are, uh, the in the infinite um, scheme of things, we we send you love and light. Um, and um, so that's uh, just a little bit of like trivia for for life right now. Um, has been uh, a lot of talk about that. And then you know what? This week I did a big thing for myself, which I've been I've been guided to do for a long time, and uh, I figure it's worth talking about in the reasons why I did it, and um, because I think it will really inform um everybody of you know why it's important to make changes in your life and to 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 shift things and shuffle the way we're doing things sometimes okay. um i had been sort of like advised on high you know my my intuition was telling me that i needed to get rid of facebook and get rid of instagram and i didn't fully understand why i was supposed to do that so i didn't exactly go through with it there was one moment where i kind of did it i deleted my twitter and i think i deleted my facebook at the time as well Mm -hmm. and then i like walked back on that because i was like well i like to like um, i like to look at this and i'm you know and i'm just this is how i communicate with a couple friends and like and i had like all these like little kind of reasons why right but what i eventually came to see was that essentially the way i was using I don't know, the 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 my i'm trying to say this in in the in the, in the right way i i like to make a really even playing field for for all human beings i really believe that you know everybody is is one and that there is this illusory idea of like Oh, that person's bigger than me and I'm little and you're big. And, and that's just an idea, you know, that's just, that's just notions that people have in their minds. And I've seen it really, really strongly as the child of a celebrity, because 
you just the people are giving all this power to celebrity all the time. Like, oh, my God, that person's on television. Like and, and they make it like it's a big deal. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. For me, as an idea, it's nothing. And I love to, you know, uh, take away the sting of that energy. And I really liked making myself as available as possible um, and sort of living my life as a somebody who felt that he was one with everybody and everybody was equal and, and all things were equal. But in doing that, uh, you basically open yourself up to sort of be pulled down. I think we've we've spoken about the uh, the crabs in the uh, cage. You know, I was telling my daughter the other day, I said, you know, honey, that there's no top on the crab cages. And she's like, really? And I said, no, there's no top because you know what happens when one of the crabs tries to climb on the other crabs and get out? They get torn apart by the crabs beneath them. And this is a piece of human nature. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before, about people kind of uh, quietly, whether they know it or not, going, oh, I can't, my brother can't be like a huge success because what does that say about me if he's a huge success and I'm not? Right. Well, what if your brother's success will lead to your success? And like, you're literally getting in your own way. You know, you, right. you don't know. You, you don't know how those things work. And there's always going to be somebody there first. And in the our, our efforts to sort of like speed and race each other, there's a lot of like sort of quiet um, pulling down of people. And, um, you know, for me, making myself really accessible, it changed the way people would interact with me, which kept affecting how I felt about how the world was perceiving me because I was, I'm, I'm very accessible. And so occasionally I'll get an email about how my dad's website is not shipping out its material fast enough. And like when I would get an email like that, I would just be like, are you kidding me? Like, oh, you must. I, I'm imagining you getting that email, dude. You must. Have, you must I, love I, that. I, I'm like, I'm very nice about it. But but it, it, things like that would make me feel like, wow, like instead wow. of people respecting my availability, they're disrespecting my availability. And, you know, wow. that's just like a good example. And I mean, you know, that's not something I deal with that's all the time. Right, right, yeah, right. But, but that was no. like a month ago or something like that. Like when my dad's right. album had come out, somebody randomly messaged me that. And I was just like, what the actual <laughs> fuck is going on here? Like, what am I doing? I should not. Did you send them their album? No, of course not. Of course not. I, I wrote some sort of backhanded, like, I'm not the customer service for Snyder.com. I don't know what Let me go check the about. garage. Hold on. Yeah. Let me... so like, like, what do you think is going on here? But, so you know, funny. that sort of message, you know, and variations, you know, other things that aren't so pointed and aren't so whatever. Yeah. Usually, a lot of times it's things that are just sort of like, nobody knows but it just sort of it, like i'm sort of confused you know it, it's like right, when right, right. when i was in high school and somebody would come up to me who didn't know um my family from a hole in the wall and they'd say uh how's your dad doing and i'd go how's your dad doing <laughs> and then they'd go oh um that was a dumb question, I guess. Uh, my, dad, my dad's good. Uh, you know, he, he he plums. Uh, the, the plumbing is going well, and um, yeah, it's good. Maybe I shouldn't have asked you about your dad. <laughs> you know, That's and exactly. and like that sort of level of like, do are we on this level of like, let's talk about our families together, or is right, this strange? Right, right. This seems strange to me. Uh, so you know, being accessible so that I can communicate and I can, you know, like, like, cause I like, there's so many people who, who get me, you know, like, and, and, right. you know, our audience is, 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 you know, the, the, the plenty of, uh, you know, just filled with people who really, really understand me and, and what I'm about and right. always just show me the, the height of respect. And it, uh, thank you guys. Thank you all for, for not being those people. Um, you know, but, but there are lots of people who really kind of like, kind of take advantage and like, like there's even like this weird thing where uh, I make music and um, you know I have a friend uh, Mark who, who Marky reached out to me a little while ago and he and I've been friends on on social media for a long time and we're both kind of spiritual guys we post you know similar things and we exchange things and one day he he, he hits me up and he's like I just listened to your music I've never listened to it before I was scared I wasn't gonna like it but I loved it it was great and um, I, I don't know why I never tried and listened to it before. And I started to kind of figure out why that was. And there's this thing about people in the comic book industry that I really like. Um, people, like if I like them, but I haven't necessarily been drawn to their work, I'm very nervous to read their work. 
because I like liking them. You know, they're, they're good people. You don't and I not won't like them, right? Yeah. I don't want to not like their work and like them. And I don't want to be talking to them and feel like, Oh, you know, and, like, and don't I don't bring up your work. Don't bring up your yeah. work. <laughs> and I was, and I have friends like that, like Aaron Sparrow, one of my best buddies, uh, who will have right. to have on the show one day. Aaron is a very, uh, he's I a scholar. Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron's great. And he's a scholar when it comes to like religious texts and stuff. Aaron really knows his stuff. Cool. Um, and, um, uh, he said to me, he said, you know, I was really nervous to listen to your music because I love you and I didn't want to not like it. And, um, and, and that was a long time ago that he said that, but I realized as I was making myself available as a friend, people weren't understanding that I was there as an artist, right? That I'm an artist and, and anything that I'm doing was all in the name of my art. And they were just like, oh, well, I just want to be able to go and get a drink with Jesse, but I'm not here to go get drinks. Right. I, yeah. I'm here to present my art and I was making myself available only because I wanted to change some of the stigma and some of that stupidity of like, these people are big and you're small. Right, and right, I, right, I right. think that's bullshit. And I, I like to fight against that. But in fighting against that, all I actually did was kind of open myself up to the pit. Um, and, and, and sort of anyone who wanted to access me right. and it's a, it was amazing as soon as I stopped like, and just like got rid of my things, all of a sudden my phone started ringing really, really funny. Like, right. oh, wait a second. I can't get a hold of him anymore. Right. And then all of a sudden people started reaching out to me like immediately. And I said, this is really funny. This is why my spirits kept telling me to get rid of Facebook. Yeah, a here couple people Instagram. asked me what was up. I'm like, he, he's taking a break. He's got to reinvent yeah. himself for a second, you know? Well, and that's really the, you know, I like that you said that I got to reinvent. It's not so much that I'm that reinventing myself so much as I'm reinventing my perspective on myself. Because mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it was all about how I was coming to view it. And 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 similarly, like out here in, in Los Angeles, you know, I'll go out into the, the, um, the community um the rock community and I'll, I'll you know do do shows and sometimes because of that perspective because of that weird accessibility where like a fan of my father's could just sort of like reach out to me and be like let me gush for like an hour i'm like i'm not here for this you know like like i I've, i grew up you know along some i've heard every story i know every club it's all good um i'm glad i like him you like him that's cool but that's not why i'm here I'm right, here right. because I make music. For you. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and this seems to this sort of accessibility seems to be confusing you right. and changing and shifting the way you're perceiving my actions in right. your space. My actions in your space is I have something to say and I'd like you to hear it. Right. Um, but when people aren't getting that message and are getting blocked on the way to it, uh, what's it all for? And so for me, I started to get to a place of like a, you know, what's this all for? I feel like I'm really my, the the perception and the way people are understanding my designs is just ugh, like two completely different things it's it's mm -hmm. it, they're not connecting together so um i decided to um take a a, a cleanse of so social media it, how, so how's it, it working tell us it's wonderful i, I don't <laughs> miss it at all um okay. i you know additionally th th there's some there's some additional little parts of this as well that are right. outside of like the career things um Look which um which was important but um there's all this fighting going on, you know, it, it's, it's a really ugly bit where, you know, the people who are, feel very strongly about the left or feel very strongly about the right, you know, they, they're very righteously posting, um, you know, and, and while we may say that there's good and evil, you know, there's a guy and he wants to help the person who might fall off a cliff and die. And then there's a guy who pushes the guy off the cliff. OK, we can clearly say that the guy who's pushing the guy off the cliff maybe isn't the best, but um when it comes to this Democrat and Republic, oh my goodness, it's just oh yeah, you you can't uh, yeah, you have to turn all of that. Yeah, it, it's such social a social media is a, it's horrible. It, it's it's such a middling game, and and but everybody has come to take this perspective of like, no, I'm right, I'm one hundred percent right, and everybody else is wrong, and I just can't stand that. Well, it, that's it, why we offered this space. This is, exactly. you're not supposed to bring that stuff here, Jess. I know exactly. Well, well but, but but to to show uh, the yeah. others what they might be able to get to you know change Club up you know how they're yeah, doing yeah, things. Yeah. You know, it, it's wonderful to fight the good fight, and I appreciate it. You know, me and my girlfriend Julie, we were talking the other day. You know, we're both like people who get drawn into sort of conflict um, with other people when we feel like somebody's being bullied. You know, and I was saying to her that that my biggest motivator has always been. I'm going to prevent this person from
from doing this to anybody else ever again. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like how this is happening. And I know that if it wasn't me here, that this would be happening. This would be going down a, a big a way different, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, I want to, I want to smack this person in their nose, whether it's some like overbearing security guard or some jerk at a, at, you know, at the, the restaurant, I want them to remember how much trouble they had when they did it to Jesse blaze so that they don't do it to Joe Schmo. When Joe right. Schmo comes up, because Joe Schmo won't defend himself, but I will. Right. And like, you know, and I literally will see that this is an opportunity to save the world. I will make it better for the people who come <laughs> after me. And what did you do? Well, after I finished talking to, to Julie about it, I just kind of had like a little conversation with myself or conversation with my my spirits and my intuition. And I was just kind of asking, like, am I doing any good? And they said, yes, sometimes. Sometimes you're doing some good. But but honestly, all you're really doing is pulling yourself into the conflict, making yourself a part of the conflict and reminding yourself and empowering the conflict within you. And you're taking on a position of righteousness for that moment. And you're taking on a position of judgment for that moment. And do you think that judgment is the way to be? And I said, no. And do you think that righteousness is the way to be? And I said, no. And I, and I know that that's sort of my biggest problem right now with that conversation going on, you know, in social media, that it's just so righteous. And, you know, you don't get anywhere arguing with some person who's convinced, you know, so you, you can't argue with somebody who's convinced you need to be saved by Christ or you're going to hell. You know, that person, it, it, they think they're trying to save you, but in the name of their absolute values that they've put upon this thing, they're you know, kind of get in the way of actually being of benefit to you in a lot of fashions. And um, and they're not really convincing anybody. Their energy is sort of coming up and pushing people away. So, uh, and you know, and what we were talking about last week of yeah. you're either preaching to the converted or, or I, oh, sorry, actually, this was a conversation I had with my brother Shane last week. And he was just talking about how you're either preaching actually, to the yeah, converted. We talked about the left and the right wing of yeah. the herd being the same. Uh, yeah, no, it was the combo, combo with Shane over the weekend. But he said, you know, you're either preaching to the converted or you're coming up against somebody who's made up their mind and they don't want to change it. And like you, you, you really want to waste your time. Right. And I, and I was just so like, that is so right. Cause I always believe that there's a time and a place where it's appropriate to make a comment or say something and that the universe gives us these opportunities when somebody is open and they come to you and they ask a question when they come to your show, because they're interested in what you have to say, you right. know, our audience is open to what I have to say. They're open to right. what you have to say because right. they've decided that they'd like to hear from from us and and they'd love to be able to try to add our thinking into their thinking and and what an honor that is when right. anybody does it yeah. but when you're just on facebook that's nobody's giving you permission nobody's right. giving you permission to like jump onto their their feed right. and tell them whatever and largely we just got people blocking people and getting upset and all this stuff and once again for me as an artist it's it's neither here nor there with, with why I'm even there in the first place. And the idea of me making myself accessible so that I can, you know, let the message be that every, I believe that everybody has inherent value and everybody is equal, you know, in the eyes of the infinite universe. So, you know, really it behooves you to pull yourself out of this polarity fight, you know, the back and forth fighting. And uh, it was time for me to pull myself out of that so that I wasn't reminded every day that this was going on. And I could Lend live in my own... Yeah, I could live in my own neutral bubble of love and positivity. And um, okay. and it's really just freed me up to do more of the things that I love. And I'm not cool. I'm not locked in conversations that are middling and not important. Right. No, and, that's and, and whatever that's else. Great. I think that's a good choice. Uh, you know, and if anything, I, I would agree. You know, I, I, I personally at this point, I don't even I barely I definitely don't post political stuff, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just, I, I stay out of it. I don't let it affect me, but I think you're doing a good thing by taking a break, but we should wrap up that conversation. Yes, uh, absolutely. I, 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 I love everybody. And this was, a, I, I went out of my way to talk about it just a little bit because I know a lot of you people follow me and, you know, and there were some people who were like, did I get blocked? And nobody got blocked. I, I, I still love you. I still view you and I all as the same level and everything, but I was just sort of, uh, you know, feeling uh, if my in my mind, feeling a little disrespected by by certain people who who just didn't understand me fully. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of an enigma, so I, I confuse some people sometimes. But I did that on purpose. <laughs> I like to be be some point of confusion for people. So that's what happens when you do that. Right. But um, without further ado, could you please give us one of your fabulous Michael Zinn introductions to our fabulous guest? <laughs> I can. Well, uh as everybody knows, this show continues to grow and attract all sorts of wonderful people. 
Um, and I guess both you and I, in our personal lives, the same thing, just because of where we're at. Um, and for me, it's funny that you're talking about social media, because that's actually where I first met our guest. Um, but uh, Sunshine. That's why I was holding on for so long. <laughs> Honestly, I swear I was holding yeah, on because yeah. there were certain people that I really do love sure, interacting no, with. And it, there's what the overall was, was yeah, killing listen, me. Listen, it's all good. Anyway, <laughs> so so Sunshine kept coming up in my feed. And it, Sunshine has this amazing smile and she does this amazing painting work. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to see that. Um, but you know, we were trying to figure out what to do with the show and all of a sudden the guests just like started coming up and it seems like every week, you know, as we, as we need to find a guest, that person comes into interview. And uh, so Sunshine was on a radio show. She posted how much fun she had. And I was like, that was the first time she was on a radio show. She's got such an amazing story. Uh, we need to tell it here on the, on the, the live stream of consciousness. So you know what we like here. Yeah. So I invited her on. She said, yes, I'm super excited to have share her story and share her work. Uh, no further ado. I will bring her on. Everybody. Welcome. Sunshine. Okubo. Welcome, Sunshine. Sunshine. Welcome to the live stream of consciousness, my dear. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. on and joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Am welcome. I saying your last name right? Is Okubo? Is that yep. right? Yeah. I was like, the only other thing it could be is Okubo. Yeah. But Okubo yeah. made more sense. So yeah. what what's the origin of that? Yeah, I was gonna ask. It's uh Japanese. Nice. It's that's very cool. I had no <laughs> idea. Wow. And it, it's, that makes so much sense. So so Sunshine, what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Oh yeah, you know what? It's actually it's um, a common name in Africa and Japan. Like yeah, that's why that's why I was a little Joseph curious about it. Wow. Yeah. It does yeah. have an African uh, spin to it, yeah. And what and do you know what it means? Like I know Snyder means one who cuts. <laughs> it's my ex-husband's last name. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay. You know, if you're walking around with it, you gotta you go, go I, look I, up. I should, you know, I there's so much meaning in our names. When I looked up Snyder and I found out that it meant one who cuts, it's it comes, it's Germanic and it's um it's it's a tailor. You know, the the the, the tailor was Snyder. You know, you go to the tailor, they cut things. My mom's a tailor. My mom married into the family. She's a tailor. She graduated from FIT at 16, you know, and my father, um, would you say that he has a pretty cutting um, <laughs> to, to his voice and the way he speaks about things? One who cuts to the point, one who cuts, you know, like it really took on a lot of meaning for me. And, uh, you know, we say our names all the time. We introduce ourselves to know what your name means. I feel is so important. So you got to look that up. You got to find out. I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> cool so so uh we have some people saying hello we have ninja saying hello taylor is asking us if those are your paintings on the wall I know yes yes they are they are i'm gonna i'm gonna share a little bit of uh what sunshine does um and and i have some pictures of of her work and some of her story but i want you sunshine to tell us your story and how you came to be sunshine because to me that is really the perfect story for our our podcast here because it's all about living intentionally and kind of manifestation and all of these things. And I know a little bit of the story, but you have absolutely like manifested your own personality. So we talked a little yeah. bit about that uh, earlier. So why don't you tell us? I, can I just say real quick? Yeah. I like to always say this to our guests. Um, oh, we brought this show you know together with you know with bringing on people to to collect stories of awakening stories of you know becoming conscious beings on the planet everybody's story is different and i feel like because of that everybody feels like the odd man out and it's through multiple stories of other people that we sometimes start to feel like maybe we're not so alone so please when you tell us your story take your time because this is this is what we want to hear we, we want to hear how you went from being somebody who was just your average everyday person going through life like we're all taught to and then started going you know what i think there's a little more going on here so please if you could give it to us the long version we'd love to hear it <laughs> uh, okay you got it <laughs> um the long version is i left my parents at 16 
and was homeless for a few months, uh, abusive situation, and then I married into another abusive situation, uh, was, had a baby at 21, divorced at 23, and just was a single mom for a long time, and then married again, Mr. Okubo. <laughs> And it was just um, just not the right fit and started gaining a lot of weight. You know, there's a lot of addiction in the world. Everybody has an addiction, whether it's food, shoes, drugs, whatever. I was into the food and I gained a lot of weight and I was just miserable and one day I was like, what am I doing? And just started reading about uh, food and mindfulness and started taking yoga classes. And it just started, you know, unfolding from there. And uh, when uh, I left by X um, in 2019, and I bought this magical house of mine and one thing led it to another. I was, you know, uh, floating over my body, <laughs> you know, at night and just having lucid dreams and waking up and, and painting and. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> so let's recap because there's a lot here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, one, I, I know from experience a, a relationship when it's not right, even when it's with a wonderful person, my ex-wife, Patty, she's a wonderful person, but on a lot of levels, we weren't exactly right for each other. And I ended up feeling very, very worthless, very not attractive was, was really the big thing. I, I didn't feel desired. I didn't feel attractive. And like me leaving the relationship, part of it was like me trying to get my confidence back because I, I, I sort of, got confused in my relationship. And I've seen a lot of people who, you know, have gained weight after relationships like that and whatnot because they felt worthless. Did, would you say that, does that have anything to do with, you know, as you were struggling with some of that? Um, the, um, the other thing, reading about your diet and mindfulness with your diet, what books were you reading and what kind of things were you reading? I know myself, um, you know, I was kind of blown away when I read about monks in Tibet and how their meals were one single vegetable. Today is the potato day and they're only doing potatoes. And then and you find out, though, that our digestive system, you know, to eat meat and to eat um, a, a vegetable or a fruit and a starch all at the same time, that your stomach can't actually digest all that stuff at once. And, you know, it has to kind of play a game of like, what level of acid do we want to become? And what food are we going to let pass by? Because, you know, your system has to get to a certain acidity level to break down the food in your stomach. So things like that helped me to kind of simplify my diet in certain ways here, there. What sort of things did you learn about that? How did you break that nut? And then also what led you to the home? And would you say that this home was the thing that sort of sparked um, your spiritual growth? Cause I know Michael's home was owned by a rabbi and uh, I love that place. Every time I go there, I've had some amazing meditations. There amazing experiences there. Um, and if even like tapped in to talk to that rabbi who basically said that that home was the greatest gift he gave to the earth. He filled it with great vibes and a lot of people have lived there and every single one of them have had the benefit of all the vibes that he put into it. So I totally believe in that kind of stuff. So can you talk to us a little bit about the books that you read for your diet and then also that, you know, the house and how you came upon the house. So was there any sort of spiritual synchronicity that led you to that house? Um, well, I can't even remember the books that I read, but it was just one after another of, you know, mindfulness turned into, you know, um, anything spiritual. Well, then what would you call mindfulness or mindful eating? Um, so that people at home understand, you know, what, what sort of change you, you decided to make as you became a mindful, you know, mindful about your diet. Just what you're putting into your body. And uh, I am a vegetarian now, so I don't eat meat. And uh, it was just mindful, mind, body and soul. I'm a big yogi. So it was all about um, just the environment and me gratitude, and gratitude, where yeah. it comes from, what's in it, how many ingredients, that kind of thing. Yes. Yes. And then, um, the house, 
I actually had out of body experiences prior to getting the house, but I did manifest this house. I was looking for it for about six months and I called my realtor and I said, today is the day that I'm finding my house. And we went to 10 different houses and none of them was, was it. So I went home and she messaged me and said, go to this address and there's your house. I'm not going to be there. I'm going to have a, fr a friend go. And so I, ended up going here, never saw it, pulled up, and I was like, this is it. Um, the woman was in her pajamas. The house was only up on the market for five hours. She's like, I'm sorry, my daughter's here. I go, that's fine. What's your daughter's name? She says, Phoenix. I was like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I walked in mm -hmm. and it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing. And it's on, um, native old native grounds um ronkonkoma um seven minute walk from the lake wow oh wow cool i know that area yeah so That's, I, that was my train station for a very long time as a voice <laughs> director living on long island <laughs> yeah. Next station ronkonkoma yeah. <laughs> i um, love doing that impression east yeah. islip <laughs> the next station is ronkonkoma <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so you, uh, my all my friends say, as soon as you pull into the um, street, they feel the energy, you know, coming from my house. So. Wow, what a gift that must have been. Yeah, yeah. It's so what was your first experience in the house? Like, I mean, was it first night at the house and you're like floating on the ceiling going, I think I picked <laughs> the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it was probably the second night. <laughs> all right, all right. You had to warm up a little bit. It was just getting their fingers into you, and, and then yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, what, what did you did you um, get to speak to to any spirits or spirits of the house or ancestors? What sort of experience did you have when you left your body? Um, usually, I just float and just watch myself. Um, I've had uh, Saint Germain, the Violet Flame, came to me. Um, I woke up, and he was glowing over me. Um, Mother Mary is very present in the house. Um, and I do healing now, energy healing, um, with St. Germain. Uh, so a lot of freaky things happen when, you know. <laughs> Can I, you know what? I, I just want to interrupt for, for our audience for a second as you're as you're saying this, because, you know, the, the bridge that I like to be is is a, a bridge of understanding. And sometimes when we get into like speaking about uh, deities or archangels and stuff like that, and we're channeling these people, you know, a lot of people tune out. You know, we have we have members of our audience like Taylor who are like, you know, they're, you know, atheists or, or agnostic or, you know, somewhere in the middle. And, and they don't really like understand how this can be. But as we've talked about on the show many times before, everything is about the idea. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The idea for both. So when there is an idea, it doesn't matter if you think that Mother Mary might not be real. It doesn't matter if you think that Jesus might just be a myth. There are many people who have held on to and put energy into this idea. And as ideas are, <coughs> are propagated and God bless you. Excuse they me. grow and they grow. And I was really, you know, when I started, you know, doing my own channeling, I was very big on sort of like selecting things that I thought were sacrosanct. Like I started with like the spirit of the birds and this, you know, like I, I realized that there was sort of energy patterns that were inherent and that they were kind of governing all the different things, similar to how the Native Americans think about it. But eventually I cat my way to God, you know, and, and I will, I, in my own life, I use that word God. Uh, it means something very different to me than I think some people think when they think God, you know, is the infinite um, amorphous thing. But for me, the, the uh, you know, sort of the, the energy of the birds that was governing all the birds, God was just the energy field that was governing everything. And as soon as I realized that that was obviously a thing, if there was an energy field that was governing this and governing that, then there should be one that was governing all things. So there are absolutely Ide ideas of people and things, whether you believe that they're true or not, people do. And, and it's very easy to tap into these things. And you will find just bizarrely that 
people have very similar experiences when they connect to that, you know, eternal flame or uh, see Archangel Michael or experience Mother Ayahuasca or something like that. It will be surprisingly similar for people who don't know each other, had no idea about what it was going to be like. But it is. So, um, you know, for all of you people who bump on that idea, try to realize that it's just an idea and ideas have great power and they come before form. So continue. <laughs> uh, uh, you're great. Yeah. So uh, we do have some people chiming in here, uh, Angela. Took a took a little takes a little side note. The Okubo name means large hollow. Mm. Just in, in case you're interested, you might want to figure out how that relates or or maybe not. it relates to her home where she does her her, her spiritual energy work. So so, so um, when I started seeing you, it was it was probably during the pandemic, and I think that's a big part of your story, um, and and the book. Uh, that you wrote sunshine warrior your most recent book uh sunshine warrior i think came out of that why don't you tell us that story i'm going to bring up some things while you're talking here well i was scheduled to go to cozumel on may 2nd and um that obviously the universe had other plans so i decided to keep the week off and uh, paint my shutters and do stuff around the house. So I painted my shutters the sunflower yellow and everybody walking by kept commenting on how beautiful it looked. So I started painting my fence with sunflowers on it. <laughs> and then people started commenting and uh, asking for different things dragonflies butterflies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I love that i love when i see houses like yours in neighborhoods yeah so great. My, my girlfriend was kind of making fun of me today because she's like i blend in with my walls because <laughs> i i love colors and i and i put like my post like it soothes me i really think it's like like color yeah. therapy and i just cover my walls with colors i do all these like uh um, what do you call it? Uh, collages at oh, cool. And and I, I she's like, You and your clothes, I, I need to do a picture of you like in camouflage, hiding against your wall, blending in with your clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, here's a picture of you, Sunshine, just to give a scale of some of the things that you've been working on. Yeah, lately, you started with your fence. I, I'm imagining some of the other work that I have here that you sent me. I don't know what what is the scale of this? Are these on, on buildings no, or are these that, more like that's actually on canvas. These are canvases, okay. Yeah. 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 But and I you, started with these. my fence and then I painted uh my best friend's shed and then that was my mm -hmm. yoga instructor. Oh I love that one. That's my soul. That's so pretty. That's a self portrait. I, I really love yeah. that. That's wow. beautiful. 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 Really pretty. Yeah. So, so your work obviously ref reflects spirituality and. I, I'm whatever. a big fan of simple shapes and silhouettes. And I really believe that silhouette imagery, you know, and dynamic, you know, color is very effective. And, you know, you, all of these really prove that, you know, it's like it, it, pe people think that they have to be like some insane level of, of, of artist. To, like it's really just, you can see a thing and you can bring it out and color can bring a thing out and you just so have much to energy go yeah. and yeah. And put your energy into it. And the energy comes through. These are, these all just make you very happy seeing all this stuff. Yeah. I, I, I love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. Well, it's happy art or healing art. You know, yeah, you're inspiring yeah. me. Thank you know, I was, I was thinking about that earlier. I was like looking at your artwork and I'm like, you know, the term street art came to me and I'm like, no, it's more like, tree art <laughs> like forest art you know what i mean yeah, it's like yeah. this more organic natural feel to it but it's i mean it's kind of like graffiti-ish because you're painting on the on the fence but it's right. it's so not you know it's like it's it's more it's organic. like it's like mother earth has been sending somebody around to graffiti things yeah <laughs> she's like this That's place great. is too industrial go yeah go graffiti <laughs> some flowers and grass on everything and <laughs> remind us where we come from yeah. so but um it's a lot of healing a lot yep. of healing yep 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 absolutely so so that's one of the things that um i got just from before we even really 
spoke to each other just yeah. from looking at your artwork and your posts and stuff. And then, and then I saw you come out, came out with this book. Um, would you be so kind to share some of it with us? Let me see if I can uh, bring this up. I don't know if you, can you read it on the screen there or is yeah. it, too, is it too tiny? Looks good for me. Well, I want Sunshine to read it to us, like oh. we had, like we had Eric read read his book to us. <laughs> oh, story time! Uh, yes. uh, there was a time in the world when I can't write. There was oh. great sadness. The darkness had infected millions of people. Mask masks were worn to help from spreading the sadness to others. The world had basically stopped. People didn't know how to handle such sorrow. Right. And that you got that image there. Yeah. Uh, now this is not in order. Hold on a second. I just want to find some, some That's right. other stuff to read. Basically, I have it as my granddaughter. She came up with an idea to go paint the fence, make it happy for the neighbors. And then she ended up painting the whole garden on the fence. And uh, it changed the world. It started spreading uh, throughout the world. The air was cleaner, the waters were clearer, and the wildlife were dancing. And it brought lots of love and joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's now known as the Sunshine Warrior. <laughs> right. So I, I didn't realize that you had kind of made it about your grandmother, but really it's kind granddaughter, of granddaughter, granddaughter, granddaughter. Yeah. I'm sorry, but okay. really it's kind of autobiographical, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's really you just used her as an avatar for your childlike nature yes, that, you, that yes. you rekindled. You know, it's very funny. I, I've always been really connected to my childlike nature, and last night I actually got into like a little bit of a uh, like not even an argument or anything with, with my girlfriend, just a conversation about, uh, cause I got triggered about, I play with toys and, um, and, and she wasn't trying to like bust my chops or anything, but I was like, I, I was feeling a little like made fun of because that's how I'd been made to feel as I was growing up that like I was doing this childish thing and playing with toys. And, but I love that about me because it, it's my innocence. It's, it's my innocent yeah. nature. And, and, and it's, I believe what keeps me grounded to that place of possibility and that place of idealism. And I really believe that that's the thing that most of us lose as we go through our life. And honestly, my spiritual journey for the past 10 years has been trying to get it back. Yeah. Has been trying to reconnect with that person who loves comic books and loves toys and wants to play and wants to have a good time and and you know loves people and 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 just is filled with love and all of the sort of walls that people put up in in our life and you can't do this and you can't do that this way and they tend to just sort of disappoint us you know and I was realizing that I was I was very heartbroken on a lot of levels and um, you know so much of my the end of my my spiritual journey or, or the more you know recent thing has been getting over those blocks so that I could reconnect with, you know, unbreak my heart, put my heart back together, have a more reasonable expectation for various things and feel good about who I am yeah. and, uh, you know, and not allow stupid feelings that other people have, um, like largely just not being understood. Like that always just bothered me. The fact that people didn't understand why I chose to do this and would kind of make it like I was infantile on some level. Like, no, I, I'm, I'm a very smart guy. And, and I, I, using my brain, I have seen that the more adult you get, the worse you get creatively and the worse you get as a human, uh, you know, and trying to, to connect myself to that for all the right reasons. And, and I think sometimes people go, oh, it's hippy, dippy, bull crap. It's not hippy, dippy, bull crap. It's the way. <laughs> it is the path to, to real love and success in your life and in your heart and to not growing up to be a grumpy grown up whose heart's broken and has given up on all their dreams. You know, yeah. that, that we don't want that. I don't want to live in a world with a bunch of heartbroken adults. And, uh, and certainly if I'm one of them, then I'm teaching everybody else to do the same thing. So I, I love seeing that uh, you depicted uh, through your grand your granddaughter, but I, we know it's you. Yes. <laughs> well, it's funny because I did, I had to heal my inner child and the minute, and that's when I became sunshine. Right. And um, I actually, I have a sequel already in my head with me and my granddaughter. Oh, that's awesome. Traveling around and uh, 
you know. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love, you, you know, you, you, the, the, the older generation and, you know, when I want to be the difference and I try to be the difference with my children, you know, I think we forget that, you know, we, we remember that it's important to listen to your elders because they yeah. have experience. Yeah. It's important to listen to the youth because they don't have those experiences exactly. and they are untainted. Yeah. And it is the wisdom of the old combined with the wisdom of our youth that will bring the best results. And and we're so quick to just be like, oh, you dumb child. And that is not the way, you know, yeah. to, to, to try to see the worth and the merit and the things, the words of a child. Uh, I, I really believe that that's the highest wisdom that we can hold I because it's agree. it's so yeah. easy to just ignore a child child but but brilliance comes out of children all the time and and i see that with my kids and i try to let them know that i view them as as a wealth of knowledge for me and that i'm always learning from them and i i, I applaud that uh, approach i think that'll be a really successful even more successful than your, your first one <laughs> yeah. so you hit on something you said you became sunshine i like that uh story we spoke a little bit about that yeah uh, and i and i to totally believe that's like a real healing and a manifestation thing. So tell us that story. Like uh, you, you told me that, that you told me about waking up and just kind of realizing that that's, that's who you were. And you kind of took on that identity. Yeah. One night I just was like, okay, I am grateful for this journey that I was on. Um, and I just thanked everybody who was part of that journey, whether it was, a hard journey or a good journey. And I said my thank yous and I wished them nothing but the best. I went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night uh, just screaming and crying and just cleansing it all out. And then the next morning I was sunshine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, woo! You and, know? You, and you totally are. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, it, it's, I just love the story because I can see it. You know what I mean? And and I, I guess most people here haven't kind of followed you on social media, but I remember again, seeing the paintings just popping up and going, Oh, that's really, they're really bright and they're colorful and there's a real energy to them. And then I just saw you growing and doing more. And then you're like, yeah. Oh, I, I got asked to paint this building and I got asked to paint that building. Yeah. And you, then you were traveling state to state yeah. and doing your paintings and you literally became sunshine you I literally am, became I what you sunshine. set out to be and, <laughs> yeah. and and your style is so recognizable you know your your specific sunflowers you know like i i feel like whenever i see them i'm like oh i know i know that style yeah which, yeah which is great i think that's a hard thing to do as a painter you know um that's so cool. I, I really like, again, there's all this like silly, like infantileness, like, you know, w w associated with sort of some of these things, you know, that's why I'm so, was so sensitive, like, you know, to my, to my, uh, to my girlfriend, like she, she didn't, she didn't bully me. She didn't say anything like nothing, nothing rude. I just had like a sort of reaction to sort of like, she was just like making a little joke. And I, but, but I hate when I feel um, that, ah like 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 that i'm reacting badly because it reminds me like oh obviously i have some sort of unhealed yeah. thing mm -hmm. and the way people will make you feel about like being childlike sometimes can be really can be really rough and you know my girlfriend's in total support of that for me and you know she's it's so it's such a weird thing even for me to react to her like and i was like literally just trying to explain to her like i'm like i know like i know you don't think anything of me like like you make me feel better about me being me right. and um you know but it's still like when it's in there um, it's, it's hard to get over, but you know, for my birthday, she got me and, and it was a little, she got me this Fox. It's a, it's a tiger's eye. Okay. And, you know, and she, she would call me a Fox. She said, you move around like a Fox. And when she first said it to me, she called me, she was calling me Foxtrot. And, and like, you know, I, I'm always like, you know, my father taught me a real hyper masculinism, you know? And so when there's anything like you get a nickname or something like that, you're like, why is this? Why do I have a nickname? Don't give me a nickname. <laughs> you know, like, like, like it's like somebody's making fun of you or something, uh, but that's just a perspective, you know? And yeah, yeah. when you can really see the, the measure of it, you know, we had, we had seen this movie, the green Knight, And in the green Knight, there was this Fox who was running around with the night and he was acting as an elemental who was talking to the, the night. And um, and he was, you know, as he was walking around through the woods, 
foxes have like a certain kind of very quick, very fast, like their legs move really fast. They go, you know, and they kind of zip from one place to another, you know. And then, uh, and then when I saw that, I really like connected to the merit and the positivity of it. And it's been so empowering to me as I've thought of myself as this little fox. And when she got me this necklace, I was like, you know, that's me. I'm the fox, the fox, fox trot. That's me. You know? And so I, I really love when I see people take on uh, a name and take the power back, something like sunshine or rainbow, you know, like it used yeah. to be something where like I would see it and I would be like, Oh, that person's opening themselves up to be sort of like poked at. But I really appreciate the, you know, being able to put new power into yeah. the language and redefine what these things mean and 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 give them our own meaning. So yeah. good on you for going. Yeah. I'm sunshine. And, you know, like, because, like, for, for me, it's always, like, every time I get, like, a little thing like that in my head, I'm like, should I do that? I don't know. You know, I feel, like, a little insecure about it. And, you know and then I finally go, all right. You know, it's yeah, kind what's of, it so great sense. is I, I've seen uh, through my life, I've seen people kind of nickname Sunshine. Oh, my nickname is Sunshine. But it never it never came across with the spiritual power yeah. that it comes across with you. Like sunshine, like the sun, not like Sunshine, yeah, like yeah, a little yeah. dainty girl, you know, Sunshine. You're like Sunshine, like like the big smile that's on your face right <laughs> now is sun. it just brings Sunshine into the room. You know, it's just yeah. you really, really embody that. So. Um, I didn't ask you earlier, but I did see that uh, you gave me a thing with this. So is this where people yeah. can see more of your painting? Yeah. Uh, is that your Instagram, I'm imagining? Oh, yes. Please, yeah, everybody yeah. go check out uh, her work. Do you, like, sell your work or you know, make yeah. yourself available to, like, do murals and stuff, like, for people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're actually, on Long Island. Yeah, I'm going to New Jersey next weekend, and I'm doing um, uh, Side of the Whole Barn. Nice, so huge. To do that, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Is that something like you could see from the highway? Like, I'm not sure. She does run um, a spiritual group, and oh, she cool. also she runs an organic perfect. farm and feeds the homeless. Oh, perfect! Yeah, so she's my kind of lady, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm excited about doing that. Um, okay. I do like this one. This one's a soul painting that I just did. Um, I do my energy healing and sometimes uh, images come to me or come to my friend on the bed and uh, they either tell me about it or, or if they have the experience before even coming to my house, they'll you know, tell me what they're thinking and I'll transform it into a painting. Oh, wow. For them. Yeah. So like a so, custom soul portrait kind of. Soul portrait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very That's cool. cool. So to, um, to uh, you know, kind of wrap up our thing, I mean, not that we're, we're wrapping up just yet, but to, um, to encapsulate your story, how did you go? Um, did you get into the the healing work? Um, you know, what was your inspiration there, and uh, what sort of healing work do you do? Is it comparable to say like Reiki or something like that? Or what? What would? How would you define it? I did take. Um, I am certified in Reiki, but um, I do some my own modality. It's um, with the purple flame, the violet flame, um, Saint. Ger Jermaine, um, and it's light massage on the legs, the arm and the back. And, um, it's a lot of inner, he inner healing is done. Um, some life regression, past life regressions come up, spirits come. It's like a whole variety of things it's different for every single person who comes but so you you so you work on people and you're visualizing trying to move energy blocks and, and and get their energy flowing you know again we've talked about this before but everybody has a a field around them the whole planet is a field that is connecting us all and connecting yeah. all things and you know when people are working you know reiki or whatever else or if you get yourself uh, your aura red or you get a picture with some curly in photography what right. they're taking a picture of is your energy field and again what came first the chicken or the egg the idea for both the idea of you is there when you're a fetus and you're just one cell and you 
grow into the cell. There's a great book I like to recommend called The Field that can really explain this to you in some scientific terms if you're interested in that concept. But yeah. this is very real stuff. And ultimately, when you're injured, even like a physical injury, like I broke my leg, there's a reason. You had energy that was either coming or was there because on the other side of things, time is just an idea on this side of things. It can be there or it can be coming. And you can get an injury based on the fact that there's an idea that needs to work itself out. All injury and sickness is based on basically imbalances in your inner energy. And your inner energy is your inner idea of yourself, your inner idea of you know who and what you are. So um, you know anybody doing any energy work is essentially working on that. And when they're saying that a past life might come up or something, you may have a block from a past life. Maybe you were killed by your best friend. Maybe you were burned as a witch. Um, you know there are a lot of terrible traumas that that can occur. My brother Shane told me about a story the other day that is just insane. I really want to bring him on again and have him talk about some more of his past lives because he was just telling me about some the other day that I was just like, oh, oh yeah. And they're not even like necessarily like a story like I want to write this in a book. They're like a story like you're like, wow, how would that affect a soul? How would that affect a person? And that's really the stories that we have inside us that need to be rectified and fixed in this life. So when somebody like Sunshine goes to do some energy work on you, yeah, all of a sudden it comes up like, oh, my God, I was burned by a witch and I burned as a witch and my best friend ratted on me, you know, like like. These are the things. And then you go, and my best friend is my mom. Oh, I don't know. Like, you know like, and this is the, no wonder I can't forgive her. <laughs> you know, this is the stuff that you need to figure out. You need to connect to so that you can grow and heal. So yeah. very, very cool to, to hear this. I, again, I, I always just like to try to make things as transparent for our audience so that they can get as much from what you're saying as possible. Yeah, yeah. So Jesse, we're going to do this a little bit backwards because I kind of just rushed into talking about sunshine and our stuff but sunshine traditionally on our show we pose a question and that question is is basically just to and we get the best answers because they're all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that 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 question is what is consciousness what what exactly is consciousness so in your in in the words of sunshine tell mm -hmm. us <laughs> I feel that it is love. It comes from inside and, you know, you're supposed to be just going inward and aware of everything that's around you and that we're all one and, you know, we should should just love everybody unconditionally the environment cosmic uh consciousness you know so so okay so i, I you're the you are the first person who said the you word used love first yes yeah. you, right away that that's what came out and i love that i love that but forgive me for talking and expanding on like what you're saying. Every time you say something, I'm like, there's so much underneath it. But Michael, you go first. And I like, like, there's so much shit she said right now that I'm like, oh, I want to expand on what she well, said. Yeah. But I mean, she said love first. And that, and that's really what we want to hear is that initial, you know, what it is that's coming out. But then you started to think about it and you said it's, it's that universal connection with everything, just yeah. under, understanding that you are connected with everything. That's, that's what I got from what you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when I, when she said love, I saw her walking very slowly. I saw her just sort of putting her foot out and putting her foot on the grass and being conscious of the fact that there was a, a life form underneath her and that she was putting her foot down and, and that she had to be conscious that she was surrounded by all of this infinite love and, and that all of these things were part of, the same thing that she was, you know, the, the left wing and right wing belong to the same bird. And, and the right. grass also is a part right. of that bird. Right. And, uh, you know, and really that I, I love that. That's a I cool vision, that. man. Did that. you really just have that? Vision? I swear. I That's swear. So when awesome. she said that, I, I just saw her kind of like moving. And that was exactly heel. what you said, Sunshine. You're like, yeah. that was you exhibiting yeah. your love to the world. By I saw her like this. <laughs> like just one foot out and like and like just very slowly stepping on the grass in conscious acknowledgement that she was about to step forth on on some more you know li some more life and some more love i, I really I'll let you, you've been speaking all night I and i'm like oh, I see time. <laughs> it's your energy healing nature i'm i'm connecting yeah, to your vibe yeah uh, 
Jesse, uh, that was cool. That was almost like a little reading right there. You just kind of read her. <laughs> her energy. That was great. I love it. I love it. So, Sunshine, what what's next for you? I mean, you said you're going to New Jersey. I mean, is that really – this is a new – what did you do before? Did you have a job, uh, you know, like did you have a job and just start painting and now now that's your job? I still have a job, actually. Okay. Um, I've been working for Stony Brook since 1993 wow. as a medical biller. Mm -hmm. um, Stony Brook represent. <laughs> I, used right, I used to live right over there. Oh, did you? Yes. I, um, my, I, my, my, my children were delivered in uh, the Stony Brook hospitals with midwives. Okay. Yeah. I have three years left, less than three years. So I, Great. you know, this is all going to be, you know, my next your future yeah my future i actually i told you yesterday i took a class on uh end of life doula to help people pass mm -hmm. and i think i would be very good helping children mm -hmm. you know that are ill um because wow. i'm very childlike um so i have i have a million percent so yeah yeah and i just go with it like last yeah. I was on this this week. I'm on that. So whatever comes my way, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> when God sends you a boat, you take yes! it. Yes. <laughs> so awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm, I really appreciate you coming on the show and telling us your story you. and sharing with us your artwork. We'll have you back when next year, when you're, you know, get, give us another year for, full of adventure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we so appreciate it. And uh, Michael, if you can get up her um, her page again on, on yeah. so that we can uh, direct people over to there. And um, and yeah, we're getting towards the end of our show. Thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the live stream of consciousness. We so appreciate your energy, and uh, and we hope that uh, this makes you feel that much more comfortable getting out and speaking about your story and talking on other shows in the future. And yes. uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thanks so much. Um, it was so, uh, so it is so beautiful. Uh, thank Thank you, Angela. Um, well, I think we'll put you backstage as we just wrap up our show here. All right, and, hang out um, back there. And call it quits. Thanks so much, Sunshine. So uh, I was being a little rude uh, for two seconds because my babies are at the wake. And oh. I'm going to call them right now. I'm going to call them back. And they can tell me we, we can, we, we're going to connect to the dead people. Oh, my God. Lu Lucille Gargiulo. Come forth. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing your, right. your your past grandmother onto the show. That's wonderful. Just just put the phone on Cheyenne, and so I can say Cheyenne is our guest next week on the live stream of consciousness. Yes, finally. Cheyenne, awesome. Cheyenne say, I'll see you next week, guys. We're, I'm on the live stream of consciousness, and you're our guest next week. You said so. See, she's our guest next week. <laughs> there she is. She's at a funeral right now, but we're good. We're, we're getting her on there. I love you. Guys. You are crazy, I'm my friend. My you show. are out of your mind. Hi, Ro. Hi, family. I love you guys. I'm sorry I'm on that radio show, but I'll call you when I'm done uh, in just a minute. I know you're all at a funeral, but uh, I gotta go. <laughs> well, they called me. They called me, so I, I like I, I knew it was my them calling at the funeral. I'm like, ah, they don't know I'm on the radio right now, but. So I just called. There you go. I gotta do my show. Nice so I said, to tell him. Um, cool. That anyway, was awesome. Yeah. What a lovely show. We uh, that is my announcement of Cheyenne next week as our guest on the live stream of consciousness. So join us next week at uh, six nine uh, six nine baby. <laughs> we, we're such perverts. Uh, <laughs> but um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We had a, um, a yeah, great sunshine. You were, you were amazing. Thank you for coming on. Yes, thank you, sunshine. Thank you. To our audience, we had a very active um, and enthusiastic, um, you know, comment section and everything as we do every week. Thank you to um, uh, the uh, Rock Against MS uh, Network for uh, hosting us on Twitch. And uh, yeah, man, this is so much fun for us. This gives us an excuse every week to get together and be friends and uh, smile. You know, 
Yeah, and smile. Last week, me and Michael, after we finished the show, we were like, we were like, man, we just got to like rebond, and like it was just a really nice thing. Me and Michael got to hang out for a week, and then we did our show. Just just he and I last week, and we really had a great time talking, putting things together. Um, and uh, and thank you to everybody too who listens and doesn't comment. You guys are equally awesome. And like Melinda just just popped in there for a second. We so appreciate when you do drop a comment so that we can see who's out there. But um, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, join us again next week. Um, on the live stream of consciousness with Cheyenne Snyder. Yes, peace. Oh, 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 oh.